Trials is back. But what about the rest of PvP? With Trials and Iron Banner continuing to be power level enabled, are PvP players going to have to grind outside of the Crucible to compete? Aside from the Ritual Weapon and reaching Legend, is there a reason to keep playing Survival? Welcome back to another Embrace Destiny video, Kaz PhD here. Today I want to talk about the Crucible, the potential impact of Trials, and keeping players invested long after they've earned Ritual Weapons. Yesterday it was announced that Trials is coming back, and no matter where you sit on the power versus not powered enabled debate, or even if you're not the biggest fan of the game mode, it's safe to say that PvP has not gotten as much love in the long game investment as the rest of Destiny. In PvE we've got dungeons, nightmare hunts, and nightfall ordeals as the main ways of earning pinnacle gear, leveling materials, and mods. Here are repeatable, somewhat challenging activities which help boost your power level and get you some of the best mods in the game. All of those enhanced sniper rifle and hand cannon dexterity mods, and so on, are earned in higher tiered PvE activities, outside of Iron Banner. However, with PvP you currently only get powerful gear, which doesn't boost your power so much as Pinnacle, Saladin's Iron Banner mods, and some enhancement cores on hitting Valor le rank Legend. When players earn their ritual weapons, there are very few reasons to continue playing competitive survival. Sure, with Trials coming back there will be new loot to chase, and perhaps reasons for sticking around that playlist for a while, but what about survival? Putting Trials aside, there is a current population problem in Destiny's PvP, and there is a trickling down effect as a result. Imagine you are a god-tiered PvP player. You jump in on day one of the season and you get that ritual weapon quickly. You work your way up to legend via your skill and the new meta. But now what? Now there's no reason for you to stick around at Legend. You don't get more rewards and there's no real penalty for losing glory points. Plus, you've got that sweet new weapon and you want to go shred in 6v6. So you and maybe some friends go into Classic Mix or whatever and stomp around with your meta weapons. There's been a lot of talk about this in the community lately. See True Vanguard's video about players adding to problems in PvP. But just as he said, you can and should play any way you like. And while some may not like it, there's nothing wrong with you steamrolling through non-competitive PvP because you've earned it. But without an incentive to stick around in comp, the competitive players rain down into quick play-like activities. Here, there's little incentive to use different weapons or experiment, and of course we're all going to be playing to win. You see what I mean? Without a driving reason to keep players in interested in competitive, that player pool shrinks and shrinks. And without incentives to experiment or just have fun in quick play, the experience becomes very sweaty, rough, and drives a lot of the less committed PvP interested players away. Now it's possible with Trials coming back that that will give players a goal to shoot toward, and they'll either stay in Trials as the competitive experience, or maybe stick around uh, survival more often as a training ground to work up to Trials. I'm not the most experienced and PvP focused player. In fact, my heart is in PvE and exploring the lore, but I like the Crucible a lot and I appreciate that it's in the game. I have been working hard, improving my skill, and I'm really proud to say that I am one legend rank away from the Unbroken medal, or the Unbroken title. I play survival to improve my skill, to earn the ritual weapons, and to reach a legend. However, once I do, there's almost no reason for me to play survival anymore. I continue to do so, oddly finding it less stressful than 6v6 and to help other people reach Legend and continue working on my skill. But there are no in-game incentives. I feel disinterested in survival after a point, and feel that it no longer matters, even if I lose all of my glory. All other game modes have their ups and downs, but I feel that this lack of incentive is bad on its own, but worse because it brings the competitive aspect down to quick play, or anything that isn't survival and elimination. I don't really feel an incentive to play the new game modes past novelty and the one bounty from Shax that's tailored toward it. Now, since Aspiration was brought up so much in the later's director's cut, I feel that's the main issue I have here. There is no aspirational content or goal in PvP after a certain point. Reaching Legend is tough, yes, and an ongoing goal, but I feel that a lack of any other goal besides the ritual weapon makes it so that progress is muddled. It feels slow. Destiny often is about achieving a few things at once. Working toward legend and your ritual weapon is a good mix. 
But once that weapon is yours, you're only working toward one thing. Now, as I said, maybe Trials is going to fill in the gap here. It's going to provide a reason and a goal to strive toward, of course. But I don't think that leaving survival as it currently is, is the ultimate solution. Especially when we consider that all of those leveling materials we discussed are mostly in PvE activities, and people are worried about the light-enabled aspect of farming lost sectors and PvE activities as an impact on the Crucible experience. So, what could be done? Well, I have a few ideas, hopefully to keep the conversation going, and so that these issues can be tackled going forward. One idea focuses on a long grind, something that rewards you for continued investment. Look at the obelisks from this season of Dawn. You play enough, earn currency, and not only get new weapons, but additional mods as well. Many in the community seem to really like the obelisk system, and honestly, I wouldn't mind if they continued for every vendor and planetary location. Right now, I have thousands of Crucible tokens, but nothing to spend them on. I have the weapons I want with the roles I want, and the only incentive I had for using tokens recently was to make shards to buy Glimmer and then Fractaline from Spider. A vendor refresh would eliminate or alleviate this problem, but I think it could go very well with an obelisk slash reputation-like leveling system as we've seen before in the game. The added bonus of the obelisks were the mods and boons. While there's still hot debate over the utility of the charged with light mods, I enjoyed the option, and I really enjoyed earning passive boons purely through leveling up my obelisk. This is a common theme in my last video, and likely will be in the later ones as well. But I like the idea of mechanical buffs applying based on your participation. We'll talk more about how these buffs could work in a moment. Another aspiration I could see would be a new armor set. Now, I know these things cost money and time to create, but I think we can draw inspiration from Trials and from the Solstice armor. The Trials armor not only looks fantastic, but it's a status symbol. Going flawless will illuminate the armor, giving another reason slash reward for that goal. We currently have Crucible armor with some ornamentation, which has the added bonus of allowing seasonal mods. Did you know that, by the way? That Gambit, Crucible, and Strike armor allows seasonal mods? I didn't realize that for a long time, but while it does give added value, I don't see too many people chasing those sets. The Solstice Armor had a system where you can masterwork pieces by completing certain tasks. I actually really like that a lot, and I think it could be applied here. Each armor piece could have its own unique objective. Completing it would give the plus two to every stat, as is customary, but it could also confer other benefits, either cosmetic or mechanic. Now, here we have to be careful and consider a few things. If we focus on cosmetic, we have to be careful not to suggest too much. A unique armor set and ornamentation each season might be too much to ask. Since the Director's Cut did talk about integrating seasons more into the core game, maybe the seasonal armor could be earned in any core activity, and the masterwork could give it a unique glow depending on where you earned it? Or the seasonal armor set becomes a universal ornament that can be applied to core gameplay armor? that then glows red, blue, or green, depending on if you completed the Crucible, Strike, or Gambit goal, respectively? If you move away from cosmetic but focus on buffs given to Masterwork Armor, we have to be careful not to break the Crucible. It could be really annoying to run into people who can spam infinite grenades or go invisible forever like we saw during the Revelry. One solution could be to give these perks but limit them to certain playlists. But that doesn't really work for anybody interested in competitive at all, and it may be a lot of work and restrictive to players. No, instead I think a lot of the buffs you could give players uh, would involve not breaking the game through things like extra XP from Crucible bounties while wearing your Masterwork armor, extra tokens, more Valor points maybe. For competitive, how about we put Ascendant Prisms and Shards into the PvP loot pool, with a greater drop rate while wearing the Masterwork armor? There could be tiered rewards as well, like you get more items to drop if you're above Fabled rank, and or certain armor requires reaching higher ranks in order to fully masterwork them. This one is a little contentious, but what if the helmet masterwork came from reaching Legend, and the perk was that you lose fewer points in glory on the loss? These are all random ideas, and of course each would require a lot of thought, testing, and balance to ensure that they work for every player type. We want something that is worthwhile, as in, the reward is good and the accomplishment is satisfying and clear. We want aspirations, goals to strive toward, and we want more meaning connected to what we're doing, and more reasons to do it. 
And while I focused on PvP for this video, I'm sure many of these ideas could work for other core aspects of the game as well. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Any merit to my ideas? Anything I am missing or really off the mark on here? As always, I look forward to discussing more with you in the comments below or on my stream live link in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.